Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to second day of the Earthings Masters quarterfinals. This time I would like to show you one of the best games of this second day. Daniel Dubov as White is going to play against Magnus Carlsen. And this is game number one. They played all together three games and very, very exciting uh, games. Uh, but I will show you the first one. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have D4 by Daniel Dubov, Knight F6. We have C4. We have e6 we have knight f3 and d5 so queen's gambit declined and now uh transposing to catalan uh, and here we have bishop b4 so this is kind of hybrid um continuation knight b to d2 couple of openings are mixed up uh, but of course it was played plenty of times we have the castle by magnus carlsen bishop g2 uh, and now b6 uh, so bringing the bishop to this diagonal uh, we have the castle bishop b7 as planned and now now knight e5. Uh, Daniel Dubov likes to uh, jump with this with this knight to e5 very early. We have a5 and now queen c2 and now uh, instead of playing the main lines here when Magnus Carlsen could go for of course for knight b to d7 or bishop d6 uh, he went for a4 and now a4 maybe it's threatening a3 or maybe not. Uh, Daniel Dubov knows Magnus Carlsen like probably nobody else. All of these ideas with you know h4 h5 a6 and the same attacks on the um on another wing it's um they studied this very very extensively uh but he decided that okay nothing can happen he played rook d1 and now if a3 is played probably he would just continue uh his main line main idea c takes on d5 a takes on b2 and after uh, e takes on d5 and then a3 and this pawn on a3 is defended by the bishop uh so it's pretty solid one no problem bishop probably d2 and now knight d to c4 uh, attacking the bishop and black have to decide what to do if the knight is taken then of course the bishop is hanging on b7 so that was possible uh but magnus didn't uh go for the a3 but first bishop d6 uh, we have c takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now knight d to c4 uh, and now as i said if this uh, knight is taken then we're gonna have bishop b seven and if rook a seven uh then knight c6 actually is forcing uh, to exchange the knights so knight c6 bishop c6 uh, and now what to play as black this bishop is really great lo located on the light squares uh, and black uh, gonna have the problems in this continuation for example a3 now e4 and uh, you know this center is very very powerful f4 is coming maybe e5 is coming and so on uh, a takes on b2 uh, this bishop gonna even strengthen this um, this diagonal and attack and this bishop cannot really be attacked by uh, by any of the of the pawns as all the pawns are on the dark squares around so uh, d takes on c4 is a really bad idea magnus went for h6 silent move making some space for his king uh, and now we have bishop f4 provoking maybe g5 to weaken the uh, structure of the pawns in front of the king but magnus uh, played rook e8 so he's not of course interested we have rook a to c1 so setting up the battery on the semi open c file um, and now knight a6 so magnus probably want to jump to the to the b4 and here magnus uh maybe missed that uh, daniel could just take the the bishop and now uh this doesn't work because of course the bishop is hanging and the queen would be under attack so that would be completely losing uh, also he cannot take with the queen because he gonna lose the pawn for free uh now the queen is under attack so uh something like queen e7 knight e5 now a queen g6 for example can be played very unpleasant uh the bishop can take on h6 and so on so very dangerous um position after knight d6 he would have to uh double his pawns um on uh, d file uh, and probably after knight c4 uh this pawn uh, gonna have the problems uh maybe rook e6 but definitely white stands uh, much better here uh, and have very very 
comfortable game. So uh, this was possible by Daniel Dubov, but he was afraid that this knight can jump to the b4. So he just want to, you know, take under control b3 and also c4 also is taken under control. Uh, but now Magnus said, okay, no more taking of my of my bishop. I don't like the idea of doubling the pawn. So we have bishop defending the pawns on g7 and h6. And now we have knight e3, remaneuvering the knight to f5. Uh, we have c5 now countering the center and now uh, you would ask okay but this pawn is hanging uh, why not to take it uh, actually it's a little trap here because if you take the pawn the problem is knight before uh, your queen is under attack you have to move the queen um, and then you're gonna have c4 the queen has to be moved and you're gonna lose the exchange so that's not not really the way you know you want to win the pawn uh, so this is why we have knight f5 Daniel Dubov uh, continue his plan look at the path of this of this knight uh, it's make a couple of moves uh, just to get to very nice f5 and uh, square uh, and now we have c takes on d4 we have also knight c6 now attacking the queen asking okay maybe you want to exchange the light square bishop but magnus is not interested he just play queen d7 and now bishop h3 so uh, the idea is very very tricky of course uh, the the check on the h6 is possible together with discover attack on the uh, on the queen but it's more than that so uh, what magnus should do is actually exchange this light square bishop now and play queen c6 and after exchanging everything uh just continue with uh, rook e2 and now the position would be would be quite tricky for example knight h6 with check a uh, g takes on h6 rook f6 but now black also have some counter play and take on b2 and so on uh, these pawns are definitely very very weak so that would be very difficult to make any any use of that but maybe the bishop could come also to uh, c5 and maybe something could happen with these pawns who knows so this was idea for Magnus Carlsen however uh, he want to avoid this knight h6 threat and he played king h8 uh, and this is quite bad move because now we're gonna have knight e5 so uh, taking the knight is no longer possible and now what is the threat of course the queen is under attack but also f7 is under attack and you cannot um, defend easily uh, because all of the squares around are actually covered by the white pieces and also if you play queen e6 the problem is knight h6 and you think okay i can take the bishop the problem is you can't really do that because this is the checkmate as the queen is controlling h7 very beautiful checkmate so that would not be possible this is why magnus has to give up the exchange uh, he played rook e5 bishop e5 and now we have knight e4 so magnus starts to activate his pieces finally uh, and now we have bishop d4 we have also rook c8 now attacking the queen so queen uh, have to move queen d3 uh, knight a to c5 uh, uh, harassing them the queen and now queen e3 so if your queen is harassed there are a lot of knights around and then you can always you know set up the queen uh, in you know in this position where the knights cannot attack the the queen immediately cannot jump this knight needs uh, four four moves actually to attack the queen and this knight needs uh, at least three moves so uh, it's very very safe position for the queen we have king h7 now and bishop c5 so Daniel Dubov decided that he gonna give up the pair of bishops that these knights are a bit too active so better to to play a bit safe now we have knight c5 and queen f3 inviting for d4 uh, which Magnus Carlsen in it played and now we have rook d4 so the queen is under attack another queen is under attack how to continue and it seems that Magnus Carlsen could actually win back the exchange forking the rooks and also this rook is attacking the, the rook on c1 with tempo with the check. So probably rook c8, uh, queen c8 and after queen d3 as the queen is under attack, maybe bring the queen to this um, diagonal. That could be tricky. Probably queen c1, uh, bishop f1 and now finally can win the exchange back. So knight d4 with the check, uh, g6 
and black have pair of bishops, white have one extra pawn, uh, but by the engine the position is considered as equal. Uh, however, Magnus went for queen e8 and now uh, the queen is under attack, so we have queen e3 asking to exchange the queens as well. Uh, Magnus, of course, refused, he threatened the checkmate in one on h1 and now we have f3. We have rook e8, now harassing the queen, queen f2, and now g6, also kicking the, the knight. So knight e3, and now queen f6, now attacking the rook. Uh, we have knight g4, defending the rook and attacking the queen, and here Magnus still keeping an eye on the, on the rook. We have rook c to d1, uh, and now this, of course, is, uh, this fork, of course, is not longer possible, uh, and now we have h5, so kicking the knight knight e3 uh, and here finally knight b3 attacking the rook rook uh, goes to d3 and now queen b2 and look at this from nothing out of nothing uh, all the pieces of Magnus starts to play because after rook d7 um, attacking the bishop first we have bishop c5 so uh, Magnus of course doesn't care about the, the bishop because he has much stronger threat pinning the queen that would be disaster uh, so this is why we have rook f7 first uh, and after king h6 rook d to d7 and it seems like daniel dubov doesn't care about that pin now uh, what should be played here in this position uh, of course uh, the knight cannot be taken because we're gonna have rook h7 and that is the checkmate with f4 so you can do of all you can do is uh, you know wait for your checkmate for your execution. But what Black have to play in this position? This is the only move which saving the game is Queen H8. It's double edge position. It's extremely tricky position. And now what uh, what White have to play is King G2. Uh, so even this knight is lost, then doesn't really matter because the queen can move. So Bishop E3 and then queen e1 uh, and now we have two pieces for the rook so magnus carlsen would be in the game and now black stands better so that was the idea however magnus delivered the check and this is the fatal mistake this is the fatal mistake and big, big drama because king g2 is played and now this bishop is never gonna come um, to e3 this is what what was played however i would like to just show you that this doesn't work anymore because now the knight can simply go to f5 with the check and this bishop will never um, take the queen with the check because the king is already on g2 and now there are two ways of dealing with that a king g5 then we're gonna have rook b7 first very important because there is checkmate checkmate on f4 however this bishop is pinning the pawn so first rook b7 and now uh of course if the queen is taken then we're gonna have f4 checkmate of course and if g takes on f5 we're gonna have f4 anyway and um, king can go to h6 and now rook b6 and there is no time to take the queen huge drama and uh, of course that would be the the checkmate as well this way so that was one way and if you uh, go uh, to take the knight immediately g takes on f5 then we're gonna have bishop f5 threatening the checkmate not yet first h4 has to be played and uh, this bishop is still very very important uh, but whatever black plays actually doesn't really matter uh, even this is played then h4 taking away the the, the square uh, g5 and there is no defense uh, whatever you play you take the queen doesn't really matter because you're gonna get checkmated on h7 so uh it doesn't really matter the same if you take the queen uh then you're gonna get checkmated this way rook d6 and after uh of course throwing all the pieces on the way uh it's gonna be the checkmate by for example by the pawn so there are a lot of ways to actually execute this checkmate uh bishop e3 was played by magnus carlsen but it's too late because now we're gonna have rook h7 and the king has to go uh into the exposed position king g5 and now rook b7 first unpinning the pawn and now f4 is coming uh so bishop f2 of course we would have f4 and after king f6 rook h to f7 and also it's game 
over. So Magnus went for rook f8, but it's not enough because now simply queen e3 comes with the check and in this position Magnus Carlsen just resigned. So this was game number one, uh, very, very exciting one. Uh, also, I would like to show you what happened uh, in other quarterfinals. Uh, as you see, Daniel Dubov won also uh, game number three. So shockingly, Daniel Dubov advanced to the semifinals. Magnus Carlsen got uh, knocked out, but also Jan Nepomniashi uh, got knocked out as well. Levon Aronian knocked out Hikaru Nakamura. This is shocking. All the three uh, players who got six and a half points were winners of the preliminary stage got knocked out. Wesley so also uh, knocked out by Maxime Vasile Graf. This was just shocking. Wesley so actually equalized. Uh, however, in the in the tie break, he couldn't uh, handle Maxime Vachel Lagraf actually advance uh, to the semi final. So, uh, quite shocking uh, second day of the quarterfinals. And uh, here, of course, there is no way of defending. Uh, if King goes to f6, uh, we're gonna have three different uh, checkmates uh, Queen f4, uh, Rook b6, or uh, Queen e7. All of these are the checkmates. So, uh, White would choose, of course, where to checkmate. Uh, and yeah, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games uh, from the Airtings Masters 2020, looks like very exciting tournament, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.